Okay, I know this is going to sound silly, but I have had today's date marked on my calendar for more than 11 years. It's a big milestone for the scathing. Well, sorry, it's a milestone for the scathing atheist because as of today, February 29th of 2024, this show has now had at least one episode debut on every possible calendar date. See, when we first started the show, like most neophyte podcasters, I was a bit obsessed with the show statistics. I can still tell you how many listeners our first episode got in its first week. It was 77. I remember trying to make that seem big in my head by imagining a room with 77 people in it all listening to our show together. But yeah, I tracked every possible stat. I crunched every possible number. And when I ran out of reasonable shit, I moved on to unreasonable shit, like checking to see when we would have achieved the meaningless milestone of having a show on every calendar date. And then in an almost delusional act of podcasting confidence, I marked that date more than 11 years hence on my goddamn calendar. I'd completely forgotten I'd done that, of course. And then I saw it pop up on my calendar at the beginning of this month and I was awash with nostalgia. And then I realized that we've been doing the podcast so long that I can be nostalgic about parts of it. So I was awash with like a secondary wave of meta nostalgia too. I was drawn back to a time before the show. You know, so, so like over the years, I've had plenty of chances to answer the why did you start podcasting question on the record, and I've answered it in a few different ways, all of them true, right? because there are multiple reasons anybody does anything. So if I'm on a show about atheism, I'll talk about the religious injustices that I witnessed that spurred me to want to do something about it. On the rare occasion that I'm being interviewed about the business of podcasting, I, I, I talk about you know needing a creative outlet and seeing a hole in the market. But when I'm among friends, I will tell the most honest story of all. I just felt voiceless. I remember those days on message boards and comment sections, tilting at windmills in impotent rage. I felt like I had something to contribute to the conversation, but it kept drowning in this unending sea of accommodationist apologetics. The can't we all get along backlash to new atheism exemplified by those damnable coexist stickers confronted me at every corner. And every time I pushed back against it in the name of logic or decency or inclusion, a thousand voices came in to shut me down. Now, look, I've grown up a lot in the last 11 years. I, I was hardly a child when the show started, but even a casual sampling of our archives will show that we've all come to appreciate our privilege a lot more here at The Scathing Atheist. The very idea that a middle-aged, native-born, cishet white man in America felt voiceless seems laughable in retrospect, But as does the fact that I thought the problem with atheists in 2013 was that they were too damn nice now that I think about it. But I've never lost hold of that feeling. Or, or at least I've tried really hard not to. And I've done so specifically in hopes that I could continue to serve as a conduit for other people who feel the same way. See, nobody really gives a shit what I think about things, and I never expected them to. I'm not an expert in anything, despite what I pretend over on Citation Needed. So I, I never set out to tell you what I think so much as to wrap the best possible words around what you think. Of course, I don't know you. I don't know what you think. So the best I can do is to try to grasp at the universal elements of what I'm thinking and then put them out there and trust the audience to sift itself until I land on people whose thoughts I can express. And to the extent that there's a formula to my diatribes, it reflects that. I, I generally start off on something personal and then zoom out until I reach something universal. Like, for instance, you know, starting with a weird note on my calendar from 11 years ago and zooming out until I reach the feeling of frustrated voicelessness amongst atheists. Of course, in a lot of ways, this show has robbed me of the very motivation that inspired it. It's kind of hard to feel voiceless when you're on a dozen and a half podcast episodes a month. So I have to go hunting for it sometimes. I'll scroll around Facebook and Reddit and various comment sections looking for that person in the same boat that I was in all those years ago. Now, I mostly stay out of the fights themselves because... One time too many, I've unloaded two barrels of counter apologetics on some random Facebook comment, only to have a listener I've never met reach out to me and say, I appreciate all the work, but uh, that's my grandma and she's crying now. So I, I stay out of it, right? Like most of the time, but I'm still lurking. So if you find yourself engaged in one of those seemingly fruitless battles, keep that in mind. You might be my inspiration. And again, zooming out to the universal, you might also change the mind of an observer or you might offer sucker to another atheist too flustered to engage. And you might inspire yourself to do something that turns out to be the best job you ever had. Anyway, sorry for all the navel gazing. I guess most podcasts restrict this kind of thing to their X hundredth episode or whatever. 
But when you think about it, my random milestone is at least more meaningful than that. So, you know, happy Leap Day. Some of us have been waiting for this one for a long fucking time.